A very warm welcome, you're watching Diaspora Colors, I am Hortensia Moshai. To open up the spring edition is an amazing and phenomenal woman in studio with me today. She is Dr. Esther Wadera Kibaga, an educational expert, author and a pillar of the Kenyan and African community living in Vienna. Welcome to the studio. Dr. Thank Esther. You. Thank you very much, Hortensia. It is such a pleasure having you here today. And finally, we finally get you into studio because you are one busy woman. So we are delighted to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to jump straight in. Tell us, who is Dr. Esther? I have tried my best to just summarize who you are, but uh, you have done amazing things and achieved so much. Briefly tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, I will just say, uh, my name is Dr. Esther Waidera, like you have introduced me. I'm a passionate lifetime teacher uh, who has worked in all fields of education, beginning with middle school, secondary school, adult education, uh, professional development, and then gone on into research. And at the moment, I'm doing uh, non-fiction writing that is about the African diaspora in Austria. So for you to get into education, did, is it something that you just um, thought about, woke up one day and said, I'm going to teach, or you feel like it was a calling for you? Uh, I would say uh, this is something that happened when I was in primary school. And I had very good role models in the form of uh, the Catholic nuns. And I just had that passion one day to be like the way they were. And so I worked very hard towards my girl. And to become a teacher, I joined Kenyatta University uh, in Kenya, where I studied uh, education, literature, and English. And then went directly to work into a secondary school and uh, when I came over to Austria, uh, it was easier to find work within the education system. Mm -hmm. And so I began in adult education where I worked for some time and then moved on into middle schools where my interest has been about teaching quality and uh, coming up with supportive measures uh, for the English teachers in the middle schools and special schools in the city of Vienna. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you go on to pursue further education in that regard? Yeah, after a couple of years, I felt it was time to go back to complete my dream that I had as a young girl. Which was? And uh, so I did a master's in education yes. and specialized in leadership and management. and. Once I completed that, I thought the next step was not so far away. And so then I embarked on the doctorate journey mm -hmm. and uh, completed with specialization in leadership and management, especially teacher professional development, uh, teaching quality and learning difficulties that we encounter, especially in special schools. Mm -hmm. And um, coming from Kenya and living in Vienna, did you see any difference in the educational sector, especially with the students that you were teaching? Yeah, there was a very, uh, I found that there was a very big gap, and especially in adult education and uh, in middle schools, um, where I felt that uh, in Kenya, we are lagging a little bit behind uh, because we don't pay attention into identifying talents at an early age. Uh, the other thing I found is that um, we really don't support our teachers in the classrooms, especially in special education, uh, that the teacher is left with a very big class and with children that have different kind of special needs. Uh, so positively, uh, this is something that is taken care of in Austria. Uh, what I have failed 
and I feel is a gap in the Austrian system of education uh, is, you know, uh, supporting the learners uh, to work independently without really relying on the teachers uh, to be given, you know, being spoon fed mm -hmm. and uh, not just to learn to reproduce uh, material to earn good grades, but to learn education that can help them even after they leave uh, school. So it doesn't have always to be examination oriented or the reproduction of, you know, gaining just good notes. And after the exams, the learners forget what they have learned because it was more of memorization mm. and reproducing their notes. Rather than learning and interpreting. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. and um, teaching is a very fulfilling uh, career. What made you want to do more and actually get into writing? Would you say that these experiences that you had back in Kenya, as well as in Austria, motivated you to start writing? Or what was the idea behind Actually, writing? my motivation has always been um, when I first, uh, as I was growing up and I studied actually, or um, you know, I majored in literature mm. as a teaching subject. And uh, from what I had come across, uh, the, I had a passion to write, but really sitting down and doing it has come at a later age. And getting into actual writing has been the kind of challenges that I have seen in the diaspora. That there are so many things that are happening uh, that people back in Kenya and back in Africa really don't understand. Uh, because people in Africa think life abroad, not just in Austria, life abroad mm -hmm. is like a bed of roses that don't have thorns. Money comes through the the windows, people don't work for it. And on trees. <laughs> yeah, but the reality is that life can be very challenging and people come across, uh, you know, I would call them unusual challenges, which maybe may surprise people mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was important that I put these challenges into writing for especially people in Africa, to read them and understand what we really go through. Mm -hmm. That it is not just about enjoying life, that there are ups and downs that we have to negotiate for them to enjoy maybe the little money that we send them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Dr. Esther, you had that idea and you went into the first book, but within a span of time already, right before me, you have five books. Can you dive into that, the time that it took you to, to write these books? And then we can briefly speak about each book. Uh, it has been a while that I, uh, uh, that I started collecting the material. Uh, the first book, uh, which is called Improving uh, Professional Skills for Trainers Working with the Unemployed People, mm -hmm. uh, is a work of research. And after I had completed my research, which was also in the same area, I felt that it was important to come up with a handbook that trainers working within the field of unemployment uh, that can help them to be able to deal with the long-term unemployed uh, people who have also face a lot of challenges that have not been really addressed. And, uh, uh, this book helps us to focus and to understand that these people are human beings and not just that, that on top of that, they really need our help, they need our empathy. We should understand them. We should give them a chance uh, to find their areas in life of what they really want to do, but not just look at them like disadvant a disadvantaged group of people who do not have a focus in life. They have a focus, but they have challenges. And some of the challenges I found were learning difficulties. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I really specialized in. There are people who would like to do things, but they are handicapped because probably they cannot read and write. Uh, they don't have computer skills. They have psychological disorders that were never identified in school. And now in their adulthood, they are challenging with them. Mm -hmm. And so anybody who is working within, within the unemployment uh, provision would really be happy to read this handbook. In Austria? In Austria. 
in, in that regard. Great. And uh, the next book that you wrote? Uh, the next book I wrote uh, is called Let the Bird Fly, My Daughter. My daughter, yes. And uh, this book uh, took me through a journey of finding my own personality mm. and answering the question, who am I? Mm. And where does my motivation come from to do all these things? Mm. And I discovered as I started writing this book that my motivation came from my late father mm. who passed away when I was about five and a half years old. And he has been the pillar of motivation and kind of a guidance in everything that I do till today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, next we went on to? Uh, so the next book I wrote, The Ways of the African Diaspora in Austria, mm -hmm. uh, gives the actual challenges, not just mentioning them, but describing them, giving a deep insight into what the diaspora, especially the African diaspora, experience. Mm -hmm. And it gives the challenges of those people who, who actually cross the Sahara Desert, those who cross the Mediterranean Sea, mm -hmm. to reach their dreams. But the book also shows that there are those who never reach their dreams because they either drowned mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. But those who reached over mm -hmm. here, uh, the question is, have they found their dreams? Right. And so the book tries to show that they have not found their dreams. They, some of them are still struggling. Mm -hmm. And they are good examples of the kind of jobs these people do. Challenges with the language, challenges about uh, understanding the legal frameworks of this country, mm -hmm. uh, challenges about housing, challenges about marriage, uh, the relationships between Austrians and Africans. Mm -hmm. So how difficult it can be uh, children of color, what do they think? How does the society look at them? What can they do to defend themselves and fight for their own rights mm -hmm. as children of mixed uh, parentage? Right, that sounds like a really interesting book that everyone in, in the African diaspora should have a hand on. And then you went on to the final uh, book? And then I went on to, in, I skipped and went on to do the book called Scattering Survivors. Mm -hmm. I did this book uh, because of the experiences that had occurred in Kenya in 1992. Mm -hmm. And these were because of ethnic differences. Mm -hmm. A lot of people lost their lives mm -hmm. as there, were political, there was political uh, uh, instability, mm -hmm. uh, great ethical uh, indifferences. Uh, an equal distribution of wealth and an old man approached me and the question was because I passed him and he said you have forgotten me don't you remember me was that back in Kenya that was back in Kenya okay. don't you remember me mm -hmm. and this is something that happened 10 years ago right. and when I had the time I thought I would go back to Kenya interview a lot of these people who lived in that place called Tarbo find out how have they moved on with their lives and it was quite amazing mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, heartbreaking the kind of stories that I had of mm -hmm. what they really experienced during these ethnical clashes that left a lot of people dead, mm -hmm. others psychologically and physically mimed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought I would put it. It's a very simple book, but very interesting to read. Mm -hmm. Great. So I think we have covered uh, the books that you have written so far. Uh, the last book mm -hmm. is the, the challenges actually of the African diaspora right. and it's an extension of the ways of the African okay. diaspora right. but this time I have looked at other challenges like uh, uh, challenges like addictions, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol abuse, mm -hmm. substance abuse mm -hmm. and what happens into the lives of this African diaspora when they find themselves deep into uh, into the abuse. Right. I have also focused on issues of family separation of the African diaspora, mm -hmm. people who came here together as a family, but because of, of the different challenges, they separated and what happened to their children. And I have focused on, this, on, the, on these people who came in here as young children. So what, how is their life today? Mm -hmm. And you find that very few have managed to make it out of the confusion of family separation. Mm -hmm. And then I have gone on to 
uh, look at a theme that a lot of people think it doesn't affect the African diaspora, and this is plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite interesting to know that uh, plastic surgery does not only apply just to the European, right. even the African diaspora okay. have gone so far as to, to change their features. And yeah, and then, uh, okay. yeah, it's quite interesting if you read that story on that. Mm -hmm. And then I have moved on to look at other issues of jobs, very unusual jobs, mm -hmm. that people don't believe that those kind of jobs exist. And um, like if you tell somebody, uh, you know, like if you're working, uh, cleaning up houses for the mentally, mentally handicapped people, and the kind of, you know, psychological disorders when somebody comes to realize that happened mm -hmm. you know for example like we talk of a challenging problem called hoarding uh hoarding is just like keeping a lot of just things exactly accumulating mm -hmm. and accumulating and you have no need of these things and yeah. you don't want to part with them right and so when you find the african diaspora working in such areas they are so amused because they don't believe this because the closest they have seen of somebody holding a madman in africa is somewhere outside but not in a house right. that somebody is using money to hold things yeah, yeah. yeah these yeah. are some of the things that i have described in the books right and and it's just amazing that the things that you've been able to accomplish and how you've been able to write your books do you have a team do you have people who go out and and get these stories or do you do it personally i i have gone out of my way to interview a lot of people mm -hmm. so most of these stories are people that i have interviewed right. And some of them are through my own observation, observation uh, when I was an investor in an African restaurant. Yes. Some of the things that I saw there, but I've also gone to talk to people so that I could get permission to write down this, right. some of these things. Right. It's yeah. amazing what you've been able to achieve. And you're not stopping there. You have the plan to write four, five more books? Exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so the next book that I'm writing at the moment is called Business Ventures mm -hmm. of the African Diaspora. Mm -hmm. And I am tracing or trying to trace people who have been into business into these countries mm -hmm. to understand their challenges and also to understand why did they go out of business? Mm -hmm. Because what I have seen around is that Every other second or third month, a business comes up and, you know, the it next goes down. it goes down. Mm. So business is mushrooming and not keeping up. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. All right. And you have uh, three or four more coming. Could you give us a brief titles of these books? Uh, then after that, I will, I'm writing also uh, a collection of short poems mm -hmm. uh, that is called The Power of Humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, this talks, about, it's more of a global problem. Uh, what does humanity mean to us? Uh, why do we, for example, uh, go through wars? Do we really need to go through wars? Mm -hmm. Why don't we have peace? And at the end of it all, it is the power of humanity that can restore peace and unity and love in the world. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that if we really want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, I'll be writing a book uh, on leadership and management. Uh, it is called, called The Leadership and Management of the Youth in the 21st Century. And now I'm focusing on the challenges of the young people. What kind of guidance do they want so that they can reach the next level mm -hmm. and they can be the future leaders and people we can rely to when we go into retirement. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the youth, the youth living in in. Austria, in Europe, in Africa in general, so it is... This is going to be a general book. Right. It's going to be a general book. Okay. Of course, it will be a work of research because mm. I'll be going out to interview uh, the youth all over mm -hmm. in very many places, not just in Austria only. Mm -hmm. yes. Dr. Esther, you are such an inspiration. You are a close friend, so for me to also hear you talk about this your journeys and how you keep going. It is such a big motivation and I am proud to be associated with such an amazing woman. I can only wish you the best as you journey on because the rest of us watch and it gives us the strength to keep doing what's, what we are doing. When you are there, then we are there. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for gracing our studios. We had Dr. Esther Wadera Kibaga in studio. You can get her books. Where do we get your books? Uh, you can get my books online on Amazon, mm -hmm. or you could call me and I could supply the books. All right. And next month I will also be launching the books mm -hmm. on the 14th of March. Okay, great. Yeah. So we're going to have Dr. Waidera's uh, links in uh, below on the subtitle, so make sure you get yourself a copy of these books. You've been watching Diaspora Colors. I am Hortensia Mushai for Radio Africa TV.